here. We spent the last four weeks talking to you about how to warm up and train your body. And over the next four weeks, we're gonna get a little bit more specific for your body based upon physical morphology, which means the shape of your rib cage and the shape of your pelvis. Everybody is a little bit different and based upon things like our height, um, you know, how we move, it, it's going to have certain implications on what we do for training and what we do for warm up. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about uh, the narrow rib cage and the narrow pelvis and some training suggestions for you. All right, so when we talk about the differences in terms of the shape of the rib cage and the pelvis, we have two glasses here that represent the rib cage, okay? And so one is more narrow with more distance to travel up and down, and one is, one is a wider surface area with less distance. The more narrow surface area is gonna represent a greater range of motion, okay? Which means that there's, you know, you have greater range of motion, the diaphragm is gonna descend further, and that gives you an advantage in terms of your ability to get into range of motion, um, your, fle your overall flexibility and the ability to move well, and the elasticity of your movement. Um, the drawback is you have to develop more pressure with the pelvic floor to get things to come back up. Um, whereas my more wide glass here, you can develop a lot of pressure. You're going to be very strong, but range of motion is going to suffer to some degree. It's the person that oft oftentimes always feels stiff. So one of the key skills that we talk about with our narrow singer is developing the ability to hinge, okay? And developing the ability to sort of tip this area forward so can, we can relax the muscles on the back side of the pelvis to then really powerfully contract the pelvic floor. Okay, that's, that's that along with two other key skills are what we're going to talk about in our lesson today. All right, so for our first exercise, we're gonna do a pelvic floor hinge. Okay, and this exercise is gonna to help to relax the back side of your pelvic floor so we can more powerfully contract the front side. And for this, what we're going to do is squeeze a block between Steph's knees. Okay, and the key thing here is that I'm gonna have Steph stick her butt out and kind of touch the wall behind her. So in this position, let's get nice and tall first. Okay, let's get a little bit of a pelvic tuck. And now stuff, what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna reach your arms forward, kind of stick your butt out, and try to get as long as you possibly can, all right? Your target is this wall. Okay, so get as long as you can, and let's try to find a stretch in those hamstrings. All right, can you feel that? Yes. All right, so hold there for a minute, just take a deep breath in. Just a couple breaths in this position helps to relax this area and let go of that area. It's gonna kind of tip up our tailbone. And now I'm gonna have you exhale, sort of pull through your heels and just stand up and contract. All right, so now let's, let's do that one more time. Let's breathe in and reach back. Let's put your eyes forward versus look down. Now let's start to squeeze your knees together. Let's pull up and really contract that pelvic floor. Very good. All right, so for our next exercise, we're gonna work on pelvic floor power. And with this, I'm gonna have Steph squeeze a block between her knees, okay? Kind of reach her arms forward. I'm gonna have her exhale while squeezing the block, and then inhale and quick jump. Exhale and squeeze the block, inhale and quick, quick jump. One more time, exhale, squeeze the block, inhale and jump. Very good. Okay, so when it comes to strength training, we wanna utilize movements that are gonna teach us to really powerfully contract things so we can really develop that pressure to push the pelvic floor back up. And so that's bilateral exercises. That's things where we're pressing with our arms together, or we're squatting with our legs together, that sort of thing. And so here's a good example, okay? So I've got stuff in a 90-90 position here where our knees are about 90 degrees. She's got a block that she's gonna squeeze as she presses. And we're just gonna grab these dumbbells, okay? So I'm just gonna have stuff take a deep breath into the bottom, and then just exhale and press and squeeze the block. There we go. So come back down, breathe in, exhale and squeeze. There you go, that's very good. As you can see, she's squeezing things to develop as much contraction and force as she can um, in order to create that pelvic force support to push things back up. So when you talk about strength training, we think about dumbbell presses, things at 90 degrees, you know, sitting, in a, sitting at 90 degrees and doing lateral raises while squeezing a block, you know, things like that are very valuable, okay? so. That's our focus when it comes to strength training for the narrow pelvis and ribcage.